In this video, we'd like to demonstrate the basic functions of the CardioVid FT1. If you'll notice, you'll find the power button at the top right corner, followed by the charging port for the charger. You'll also find two USB ports used to update the unit software or to export the ECG reports into PDF format. You'll also find an Ethernet cable port. On the right side of the unit, you'll find your ECG patient cable port. And on the left side, you'll find your thermal printer. Upon the powering up of the device, the unit will automatically go into the patient data screen. So we can begin by entering your patient ID. Now, if you choose to leave it blank, that's fine. Just know that the unit will automatically generate a random patient ID. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and create one. And then we're going to move forward by entering the patient's first name, their last name, the date of birth. Now with the date of birth, it is very important that you enter the uh, correct format. So make sure you enter it as a such, please. Otherwise, if you notice, if you enter it incorrectly, you, you will get a little red X indicating that there's something wrong. Okay, so before moving forward, just ensure that everything is entered properly. All right, so then the following field, I will be able to select my patient's gender. And then on the right side, you can also see more fields to enter, uh, enter more patient information, such as their height, their weight, uh, their ethnicity, whether or not they have a pacemaker. Now you do have a second field for patient information, and this is just additional fields if you choose to enter for your patient. So let's move forward with demonstrating how to perform a resting ECG. So once your patient information is properly entered, you're gonna go ahead and select record ECG here at the bottom. And that's gonna take you into your uh, electrode placement verification screen. So if you notice, there is a human body to the left, okay? And you can actually move this around so that you could see the placement of the electrode and ensure that your placements on your end are actually fine. All right. Now on the right side, you will notice your waveform screen. Now on this screen, uh, this shows you the quality of the electrode. So right now everything's in green, meaning it's good. So let's go ahead and manipulate V4, disconnected it. And if you notice now V4 is indicating that the lead is off and you ind indicate a red field. Okay. After connecting it back, it will indicate a yellow, meaning poor quality signal. And then after it is good, you will be shown that this field is now green, indicating that the ECG signal is good and ready to go. Now here on the left, you do have a few additional tabs. So the second tab here, that would actually take you to the uh, screen where you can see all 12 leads here, okay? Now here you also have a few additional settings such as the speed of the waveform, okay? You also have the uh, option of selecting the amplitude of your ECG signal. All right. You can also select whether or not, if your patient has a pacemaker, whether or not you want the markings to be shown on your screen. And then lastly, you have here your filters in which you can select from, from a 25 hertz up to 150 hertz. So after you verify that your signal is good and you're ready to take the ECG recording, we're going to go ahead and move forward by pressing auto, the screen tab here at the bottom. All right, now the next screen is going to show you your actual ECG report. So um, you notice you also have a few extra tabs here toward the left. Now let's move with this next tab just to show you, you will find important values here, measurements, okay? And you'll also find your interpretation. The next two tabs is just more measurements. And if you choose, if you choose to actually wanna print this report out, you can do so by pressing this little printer icon here. Now what that will do is have the internal printer print out the report. All right, and it'll show you that it's printing by showing this icon up top. 
So if the nurse or the doctor decide that this is a no good, I don't like it, well, let's do it again. They can easily just go ahead and discard this report by pressing discard. But in this case, it seems good. We accept it. So let's go ahead and move forward by pressing accept. <clears throat> Now, if you notice after pressing that, you'll get a little icon here indicating that they just saved into the internal memory. You also have another icon here with a little green check mark indicating that the report was successfully transmitted over to the server. So once the ECG report has been transmitted over or printed out, the unit will then take you back to your patient information screen. Now, it, the fields will be empty because it is now ready for a new patient. In this case, I actually want to recall the previous patient, okay? So instead of just typing in all, all the information again, you do have a little patient information recall button down here. So if you press, so I just did, all the fields will generate with the previous patient information so that I can save time and not have to do it all over again. So now uh, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. We're gonna go ahead and select resting ECG now we just did the auto ECG. So what I want to show you now is how to perform a rhythm ECG. One thing also that I did want to point out was that the nurse or the doctor also have the option, depending on what it is that they want to see, uh, to select the different electrode placements to see the different parts of the heart that they choose to, okay? As we notice, the uh, electrodes move from this side now to this side. Just a nice little feature there. So let's just go ahead and put it back to standard 12 lead. All right. So now instead of uh, performing the auto, we're actually going to select rhythm. Now, when you select rhythm, you have the option of performing a minimum of 30 seconds or a max of four minutes, okay? So let's just do four minutes. Let's go ahead and press start. Now, one thing to point out, you do have a countdown clock here. Okay, for the first 10 seconds, the only thing you can do is press cancel, okay? After the 10 second mark, you will only be able to press stop, okay? Anything before the 10 seconds will not be recorded. All right, if you choose to press stop, let's say now, okay? We're gonna go ahead and press stop. It's gonna take us to our next screen and it's gonna show us what it actually recorded. All right, again, similar to the uh, auto resting ECG, you have the ability to discard here if it's no good or to accept, <clears throat> as well as printing and selecting your filters. In this case, let's just go ahead and press accept just for the sake of this video. And again, indicating that it's saved into the internal memory and that it successfully transferred over to the server. All right, once again, we wanna use the previous patient. So let's go ahead and select this button. I have my patient information put in already. So let's move forward with record ECG. And now we just wanna show you uh, we've already did the auto, we already did the rhythm, and now manual. So the difference with manual is what will happen is that the unit will actually automatically start to give you a printout of what the unit sees right there and then, okay? So just to show you our ECG quality is good, let's go ahead and press manual. As you see, the internal printer will automatically start printing out the report of what the unit is currently seeing. Now. The only way to stop this from printing is if you actually select stop. If you do not press stop, just know that the unit will continue to print and print and print and print the ECG waveform until you manually select it to stop. So another thing that I wanted to show you is how to access the internal memory. So by selecting the main menu icon, which is to the top left corner here, you will, so, you will see the option of memory. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And then that's gonna show us a list of all of the saved recordings. So if you ever choose to pull up a, a specific patient's information, all you have to do is go ahead and locate that particular uh, recording or patient. Let's go ahead and select it. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and select view recording. 
And here you have it. Now you can choose to do whatever it is that you want to see with this particular recording. If you want to go ahead and just do a, uh, an internal printer, you can do so by selecting this printer icon here at the very bottom on the left side. And then that will print out your recording. And once you're done, you just easily go ahead and select close. And then it'll take you back. Another thing that I wanted to demonstrate to you guys is how to replace your recording paper. So if you notice on the FT1, you'll have your uh, your thermal printed here on the left side, all right? And if you reach underneath the unit, there's a, a slight groove in which you can uh, hook your fingers onto and then slightly and gently pull forward, which will open up now the paper drawer. All right, if you notice you have your paper in here, so just to show you, we're gonna go ahead and remove it really quick. And underneath the paper, you'll notice a circular gap here, which is actually used to help you remove the paper um, so that you don't have a hard time. Now, when placing in the new paper, one of the things that I wanted to point out to you is this black registration mark here, okay? Now, it is very, very important that this black registration mark always is located at the top left corner of the paper, as you see here, okay? Sometimes patients put, or customers put it in like this. What will happen is that the unit will kick out the paper until it sees that black registration mark, but because it's in the wrong location, it never will. So the paper will only continue to come out blank, okay? So always make sure it's at the top left corner as seen here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this pack of paper, slide it into the paper drawer. Now it's important to, to lift up that first sheet of paper and gently start sliding, excuse me, gently start sliding the paper drawer and slightly tug on the paper. And while it, you pull it out, press into the paper drawer, securing that it's closed and leave a little bit of paper hanging out, okay? Now you have properly replaced your thermal print paper. This concludes our demonstration. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to Schiller Americas or your local distributor.